If you're interested in podcasting and live streaming, selecting the best microphone for your needs is incredibly important. And for me, the Rode PodMic has been my microphone of choice since its release in early 2019. And hopefully after watching this review, you will understand why I applaud Mike the PodMic. And I know that doesn't work, but I tried really hard to think of some sort of rhyme and the best that I could come up with was applaud Mike and pod Mike. We'll just move on. To be totally honest, I thought I made this video like over a year ago. I couldn't believe that I didn't have just a straight up pod mic review, which is what this video is. But in a way, I'm glad that I didn't make it before because now that I've been using the pod mic for a year and a half, that's what I'm recording into right now. The pod mic with the Rode WS2 windscreen directly into the Rodecaster Pro. And I've also got my second pod mic here, just so you can see the standard, you know, like what the pod mic actually looks like when it's not covered up by this kind of goofy windscreen. But now that I've been using the microphone for a year and a half, I feel like I can speak to it a lot more accurately than if I had just gotten it. Plus, I've been fortunate that over the past year and a half, quite a few people have told me that they've purchased the pod mic themselves based on my recommendation, which is like a pretty big responsibility, but they say that they love the pod mic, which makes me very happy because it means I'm not just a crazy person raving about something over here in the corner, but that it actually serves a purpose and suits a community really, really well. Now, obviously the pod mic came out at almost the same time as the Rodecaster Pro, and it is clearly intended to be used with the Rodecaster Pro, but it is just an XLR dynamic microphone that will work with any XLR interface or mixer that you have. So let's run through the tech specs if you haven't seen them. This is directly from Rode. These are the technical specifications, the size dimensions, and the frequency response charts if you want to get into the real technical side of this microphone or you want to compare it to other microphones you're considering or maybe other microphones that you have already. But for me, as much as this stuff is important to understand, what matters the most is how it actually works in my everyday life, how it performs in my workflow and the results that it gives me. And that's where I can say that the pod mic just really, really shines. I love microphones, I love audio, I love trying out different microphones, playing with different things, but I always come back to the pod mic for basically every episode of the three podcasts that I do. I use the pod mic or we use multiple pod mics. I have two of them. And now this school year, since all of my classes have been moved online for at least the foreseeable future, almost all of those are done with the pod mic as well because it's the mic that I know I can rely on to sound the best and work the best and just deliver when I need it to deliver. It's not perfect, there's a few things to kind of be aware of with it and I'll get to those towards the end of this video. Should also mention that in this video I'm not gonna be doing any comparisons against other microphones. If you wanna see how the Rode pod mic stacks up against other popular microphones, I'll put some links in the description to other comparison videos I've done, and I'll also put like a playlist at the end of this video. But right now, in the pod mic review, I wanna just focus on the pod mic. I don't wanna be distracted by comparing it to this, that, or the other. I want to hear just how it stands on its own, how it sounds on its own. And so for $100, you get one heck of a well-built microphone. These things are incredibly heavy. If you've not used a pod mic or tested one out before, they are entirely all metal construction. Every part of this black material here is all metal. The metal grill is obviously metal. And even the knobs to adjust the pod mic are metal as well. And they work incredibly well. It's very secure. Once you tighten it down, it's not going to lose its position or anything. So you can get it exactly where you need it and then it will just stay there as long as you need it there. And I should also say in the bottom of the mount, there are two thread diameters, which I talked about in my Shure MV7 review. But basically it comes with a diameter that's ready for any standard microphone stand, which is amazing. And then without having to fiddle with any kind of adapters or anything like that, it has a 3 8 inch connector built into the stand as well. So you can put it on a boom arm like the Rode PSA one that I'm using right here. You don't need any adapters, any little thread things, just straight out of the box. The microphone will work with any microphone stand that you probably already have or that you're considering purchasing. And then all you need to do is plug it in and start recording. Now it is a dynamic microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern, which basically means it picks up sound 
best when it's directly in front of the microphone. It does try to reject other sounds from the room around you or behind the microphone. If I move this microphone or if I go to the side, my voice will change. If I go behind the microphone, you won't hear it as much. If you're speaking directly into the front of the microphone, that is where you're gonna get the best pickup. And it's gonna try, since it's a dynamic microphone, not to pick up too much of the room tone around you, which is great if you're not in a well-treated space. It's not magic, so it's not gonna make any space sound like a perfect studio, but it definitely helps if you have a little bit of echo or you're in a less than ideal situation, you can kind of count on your pod mic to sound really good. Now let's talk about settings real quick because I often get that question, what settings do I use for my pod mic? I'm gonna plug in this one here. So the pod mic I'm currently speaking into, which has the blue cable connected to it, is running into the Rodecaster Pro and it is running through a cloud lifter. This pod mic with the red cable is gonna be running through the Rodecaster Pro as well, but not through a cloud lifter, just so you can hear the difference. I did make an entire video all about using a cloud lifter with the pod mic and whether or not it's necessary. And the short summary is that it is not necessary if you're using the Rodecaster Pro, but it can be a helpful thing, especially if you want to put some distance between you and the microphone. If you like talking away from the microphone, having that extra gain is going to be really helpful, or if you speak more quietly or you work with people who speak more quietly, having that extra gain is also gonna come in handy as well. But I used the pod mic for over a year with no cloud lifter or anything like that and I got great results. Pretty frequently I get asked what my settings are for the pod mic and they are incredibly simple. So running through the Rodecaster Pro, I do have it on the pod mic setting. I have the gain set to plus 35. That seems to work with my voice and how I speak. Using the cloud lifter, that means I can keep my audio slider about one third the way from the top of that channel. And then the only processing that I have turned on is the big bottom, which just adds a little bit of bass. I've talked about the big bottom before and it's hilarious name, but it's just the Rodecaster's name for the bass boost system that it uses. The pod mic does tend to lack a little bit on the low end. And if you have a nasally voice like me, that can be kind of noticeable. So I use that to just add in just a little bit of low end, not very much. It's not big bottom, it's like little big bottom in my case. That's weird. So here's what it sounds like with the big bottom bass boost enabled. And if I turn that off, this is what it sounds like, just the dry pod mic signal with no bass boost. And again, with the bass boost and without the bass boost. So it's pretty subtle, but I think that it makes enough of a difference, at least with my voice, that it sounds good. It also sounds good on a variety of speakers. So whether it's computer speakers, headphones, like our TV entertainment system in the living room of the house or even on car stereos, this seems to sound good. Sometimes with other microphones, you know, they'll sound great on your computer speakers, but then you listen to a podcast on a car stereo or something and it's like, there's way too much bass or the mix is weird. So the pod mic with these settings for me sounds good on pretty much everything. Now, if we wanna compare that to a non cloud lifted pod mic, that would be this one right here. So this is a pod mic. It's got the exact same settings, but no cloud lifter. So that means that my volume slider is almost maxed out. I could increase the gain from plus 35 to like plus 40, but then you kind of start getting some hiss and noise. So this is no cloud lifter and this is with cloud lifter, but otherwise the settings are exactly the same between the two microphones. So it's up to you and whatever speakers you're listening on to decide if that is worth it for you or not. The other thing that's worth testing while I have these microphones here like this is the plosives. The pod mic does have a built-in windscreen, but it works kind of okay. It's one of the weaker areas of the microphone. You can kind of hear, I've done this many times, but Peter Piper pitched a podcast. And if I go to the microphone with the windscreen on, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Papa plosives plosives. So if you're using the pod mic without the windscreen, the key is to just speak across the front of the microphone and not directly into the front of the microphone. And that's going to help your breath go past it and not directly into it. And it's going to really make a difference with a lot of those plosives. If you do choose to add something like this WS2 windscreen, that's going to take care of pretty much all your plosive problems, but it doesn't look as cool. That sounds so shallow and so vain to think, who cares what a microphone looks like? It's what it sounds like that matters the most. And that is true. 
But in today's world, many people use their microphones for video, podcasts, streaming, things like that. And the aesthetics actually do matter. And the pod mic, I think, is a very cool looking microphone. It's very visually appealing. And it does kind of like hurt a little bit when I put this windscreen on and it just sort of now looks like a big poofy amorphous blob but it sounds terrific so especially if i'm doing anything that does not involve being on camera i am always using this windscreen 100 of the time and even when i am doing something on camera i use the windscreen like 80 percent of the time because it just makes it sound so much better and again being a microphone obviously the sound quality is what matters the most and so i've sort of mentioned some of the pod mics weak spots but if you want to know the three weaknesses that i have found over the past year and a half of using it it's basically what i mentioned the low end is lacking a bit so depending on your voice and your preference you might have to eq in some low end or if you're matching it with another microphone and the built-in windscreen definitely leaves some things to be desired but if you get the ws2 which these are like 20 dollars or under 20 dollars then that takes care of that problem entirely the only other negative that i have found so far with the pod mic is that it is always out of stock <laughs> and that's not a problem with the microphone but if you really want that microphone you got to keep an eye on you know, stock levels at all the different places that you can get it from because it goes out of stock pretty quickly. I got this first one. I ordered it as soon as they announced it in early 2019. And then I liked it so much that I wanted a second one because I do podcasts or streams and I wanted to have two microphones. If that's in your budget, I highly recommend it. It makes your life really easy to have two of the exact same microphone. I ordered this one in May of 2019, but I didn't get it until November of 2019 because it was back ordered for so long. Now I'm recording this video in November of 2020. So luckily it's not quite as bad as it used to be, but it can still sometimes be a few weeks before you're able to get a pod mic. So I'll put links down in the description to a few places you can purchase it from. One of the reasons that I love Rode products, and no, this is not sponsored, none of my Rode videos have ever been sponsored, but their service is amazing. And if you purchase your pod mic, if you purchase your pod mic from an authorized Rode dealer, and then you register it with Rode at their website, your warranty goes up to 10 years. And that says a lot that a company is willing to stand behind a product in this day and age for 10 years. And even though this microphone has not even been on the market for 10 years, I have no reason to think that it won't last way beyond that. So this is one of those things that once you buy your pod mic and you start using it, you're kind of like done with dealing with microphones. You don't have to worry about that microphone problem anymore unless you just want to have fun and experiment with other microphones or whatever. And it should last way longer than you need it to years into decades. I mean, just don't let it get run over by a bus or something and I think it'll be fine. Honestly, it might survive being run over by a bus too. Don't try that though, just don't, because you don't want to get it <laughs> busted. And when it comes to purchasing microphones, a big thing to remember is that it does come down to your preference. Don't just go with what is popular. Don't just go with what some handsome dude on YouTube is telling you to buy. Get the thing that sounds good to your ears, fits in your budget, and works with your setup as best as possible. For me, I have found that the pod mic is the most natural sounding microphone. For better or worse, this is what my voice sounds like in real life. Maybe you want a microphone that's going to make your voice sound smoother and better, but this has been the most authentic natural sounding microphone that I've used. Just to be honest with you, I don't think you can go wrong, especially for $100. And honestly, not even just for $100. If the pod mic were even more expensive, it's a great microphone at any price point. The fact that it's $100, I think just makes it more accessible to more people. And that's a wonderful thing. So if you're a podcast streamer, YouTuber, broadcaster, whatever, the pod mic is something that considers that deserves, that I consider to deserve serious consideration. And if you want to know more, you want to check out some of those comparisons that I mentioned earlier in this video, I will put an entire playlist right there, which will hopefully help you make the best decision possible.